Welcome to the practice videos for Lesson 10. This one is for people who are making up their own music. You'll notice if you go to the other practice videos for making up your own music with the other lessons, I usually focus on one, two, sometimes three big ideas that you can then use when you create your own songs. Today, the big idea has to do with the left hand, all right? So, in a lot of what we do, have done so far with the left hand, I've encouraged you to, like if you're playing, if that's your chord, right, you're going to change one finger, or you might change two. And we've talked about that, right, moving close, however you're going to do it. Sometimes you do the rocking business. Okay. It's a real easy way of setting up the harmony. And getting to sound really good without having to jump all over the place. All right. So <laughs> I guess you could probably sense that it eventually would come. Now we're going to talk about jumping all over the place, <laughs> so to speak. Not too far but in specific ways to specific spots. So these songs for Lesson 10 are in D major. So if you look at the, at the music that you can download, you're going to see the, whoops, you're going to see the D chord, you're going to see the G chord, you're going to see the A chord. And unlike before, I actually, we actually jump. We jump around. So in some ways, it's easier because you're spelling up the chord, right? That's how very often these ideas are taught, where you just spell up the chord from the bottom. So we can go ahead and do that. So we have a D. If we want a D major chord, D, F sharp, A, right? If we want a G chord, we want the G on the bottom, and then we want the B as in boy, D as in dog, there's your G chord, right? So what I've shown you without kind of telling you is there's your D chord. If you take the top two and move them up one scale degree, you have the notes G, B, but the D is in the bottom. And we've identified that by the slash. So you have the chord, and then you have the slash, and then you have the bottom note. So the bass note. You That's how guitar players communicate. They want to know what chord you're playing, and then they want to know what the bass note is. So, if you jump around a lot, it can sound okay, but very often it doesn't sound very good at all. You know, it's all, it's, it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit clunky. So, one of the things about the fiddle tunes that we did the bass and the harmony are made very, very simple because the melody is doing 16th notes. So in this lesson, we're going to do groups of four. I guess we got a big idea for the right hand too. <clears throat> Sixteenths are twice as fast as eighths. So check out the foundations. We do whole, half, quarter, eighth, and now sixteenth, groups of four. Whoops, sorry. I was thinking about the next thing I was going to say instead of playing the notes. So those groupings are brand new deal, huge deal. Learning to play in groups of four notes. We're going to like really transform what you can do when you make up your own music. So the deal is on these in this lesson. Um, the left hand is made simple on purpose. So if you're going to hop around, that fits really well with your sixteenths. Or smooth.
right? Or you can do eighth notes. A little more motion. So there's a little taste. The world of 16th notes, it's like you just doubled the size of your solar system. It's just there's so many choices to be made. And I'll recommend that you sneak into the fiddle tunes and look at the rhythms. Because you can there are a lot of the rhythms based on 16ths have a different feel. So in a, a lot of fiddle music, they have what they call a shuffle rhythm. slow down slow quick quick slow quick quick eighth sixteen sixteenth <laughs> you can make uh, jams and echoes with that simpler rhythm all right another one is four sixteenths and two eighths So basically what I'm doing there is I'm like paring it down to almost like an exercise. It's like four sixteenths, two eighths, four sixteenths, because I want it to go on automatic pilot. And I want to have three or four things to choose from. And then when I go to really make up a song, So that's not the greatest music in the world, but it has a little bit of flow, and there are some things that I would not keep. How do we figure out what I want to keep and what I don't? Well, I just start to play, and I let the little accidents happen where the hands move somewhere. So, for example, my original idea was to hop around. And all of a sudden, in my head, I heard, well, what if the bass line changes its rocking business and comes up through the scale? And that just sort of happened. I was hearing it in my head, and I just followed what I heard in my head. So some of the work that you're doing on making up your own music, you're going to sit down some days, and you're going to feel like you're like sitting at a, a typewriter, and it's in a different language. You know, it just kind of comes out, and... It feels random. A little bit of that is really okay. Reference the, the echo game and the jam to kind of get organized. Spend some time figuring out, oh, well, if I land on this note with this in the bass, it sounds really cool. Can I wander around and land there on purpose? These are all the things that I did gradually over the years to figure out how to kind of set this into a place where a beginning and an intermediate piano player could make things that sound really good. So you have to do a certain amount of experimentation where, you know, it's just not going to be that interesting. But if you'll go a little bit each day, believe it or not, like three, four minutes, if you set on the timer, three to four minutes of improvising and just kind of noodling around, that feels like a really long time. And you do that uh, a couple times a day, four or five days a week. You're going to start to sort things out. And then you kind of hit this groove. Well, I like this rhythm and that thing went well. And the next day, you just come back to what has worked well before. And you, it's like wandering around in a neighborhood. You know, you start to recognize, oh, yeah, the blue house on the corner is next to the brown house with the fireplace. And you just get used to the lay of the land. And you'll come up with these little themes. I had students for a while who were doing this exclusively playing by ear, and I'd get together with them, and I'd play down underneath them and create accompaniments, and they would just fool around. So they had uh, certain things that they really liked, and when we got together, we would play like this song because it has this and this, 
and then a different song. It goes a different speed, has these things different. And then we had our little uh, repertoire of songs that we would jam to. We never wrote anything down, but they were distinct songs. And eventually what happens, you can throw on the tape recorder, right? So you can, you can record and save what you did. You can um, learn to transfer what you're doing onto note paper. And that's really like a different version of the echo game. You play a little bit, you write it down. You play a little bit, you write it down. And if you'll check out the, the music, uh, there's a spot for each lesson for just a few measures where you get to write down your own music. And then above, they explain, well, to learn to read the notes, what you can do is you can just take those little measures and then you just find what letter name notes they are and where they are on the piano. The key, uh, the, the answers, are on the very first page of the lesson. So you just go back and forth and a little bit each day, you're just writing the letter names of the notes. Right? You do it a couple dozen times and you start to get to know the notes, just like you learned the alphabet in school. Nice thing is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There's only those, right? And you have the sharps and flats and they repeat. They do some fancy things, but it's, um, it is organized in a way. And what I found as far as learning to read notes well, if you do that little exercise, 30 seconds a day, you start to see the same notes over, right? And if you're not sure of the letter name of a note, just go, just go look up the answer because tomorrow you'll look at it. And if you still don't remember it, just go look up the answer. Five, six days in a row, eventually what's going to happen, you say, well, I've seen that six times. I've seen that seven times. Now I remember. So you don't even have to try to like remember it all. A lot of people get that way. Just look at the note. If you know its name, write it. Check back with the key. Go back and forth. Do a few minutes of that each day. Roll with it. And over time, you'll know those letter names. And writing it down helps a lot. It really does. And there are some pro computer programs that help you do that. And we'll get into that a little bit in more detail uh, in the live lessons to help people who are making up their own music. Um, and I can help you with that. It's sort of its own world by itself. But if you want to take it to the next level, you want to write out your songs. Uh, that's what I would suggest you consider doing. Okay. So big ideas for today. Left hand jumps around. But if you make it a rocking simple thing, it fits with the right hand. Big thing for the right hand, 16th notes. Check out the foundations, right? And then pull little snippets from the songs to give you an idea of how to use those 16ths. And you develop those in a jam, and then you stick them together with the other things that we've talked about, and you're on your way. Thanks very much.